And we're live. For this session, we have uh, Ken Van Dyne and Robert Bruce Park, who are going to be talking about the latest developments in Gwibber and uh, the new friends code that is behind it. So, Ken, Robert, take it away. Yeah, hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm going to start out a little bit by kind of introducing what, you know, what we're talking about, what the friends platform is. And then I'm going to hand it over to Robert, and he's going to give you a little bit of more of an architectural view of how all the pieces fit together. Um, and then I'll take over again, and we'll actually talk about the QML API for it, which I think app developers care about. Um, so probably everybody, uh, you know, everybody probably remembers Gwibber. Uh, it's been around since Karmic in Ubuntu, and it was part of the um, uh, social from the start initiative that Mark had. You know, we wanted this uh, not just a, a, an application for interacting with Twitter and Facebook and Identica and your social networking accounts, but we wanted it to be part of the desktop. So it was tightly integrated with everything you did in the desktop. Um, other apps could utilize those APIs, and just from their Ubuntu desktop, they could tweet. Like we had meme menu for a while, and you could just pull it down from the indicator and type in a tweet um, without actually opening Gwibber. So Gwibber has always provided that, ever since Karmic has provided these APIs. Um, but that code was pretty old and crufty, and it's gone through several overhauls. And um, in the effort to um, uh, port it to Python 3, um, we decided to actually just completely scrap all the code and start from scratch. So Barry War Warsaw started that out um, during the karmic, uh, the Quantal cycle, and he actually wrote a full test suite before writing any code. So he wrote the full test suite um, basically to the old Gwibber specs and then started test-driven development. And then uh, Robert here uh, stepped in and kind of took that over from Barry and finished the job. Um, so now we have the friends back in, which is the replacement for Gwibber. It's the rewrite of the Gwibber back in. And the Gwibber backend, uh, Robert will talk more about the um, how it all fits together, but it's basically what does all the social networking stuff on your desktop and in the future of the phone or the, the touch images. Um, but then you can just have front-end clients that just interact with that. So you don't actually have to write a whole bunch of code to know how to talk to Facebook. Um, you just call a simple API to post something to uh, Facebook, and it goes through the friend's uh, backend. Um, so that's kind of the, the high-level overview of what this is all about. And now I'll hand it over to Robert and let him talk more about how the pieces fit together. Hi, everybody. So uh, yeah, I've got a little flowchart here I'm going to show you, and I'll walk you through it. Now I'm just going to paste the link in IRC first. And do some screen sharing here. All right, we can all see that now. OK, so uh, this flowchart, basically, this just shows the structure of the, the friends backend. And uh, I've tried to lay this out here so that the, uh, the internet is along the top in blue. We've got our various different uh, social networks here, Facebook, Twitter, Identica, Foursquare, and Flickr are the five that are currently supported. And uh, at the very bottom is the uh, the front-end application that the users are going to see that you guys are going to be writing. And uh, we support a number of different languages there. And then uh, everything in between is, is what we've done. So um, it all starts with uh, Ubuntu Online Accounts. That's where we get our uh, access tokens from and uh, some session management there. So Ubuntu Online Accounts uh, connects to the, uh, the services for us. And... Uh, Within the dispatcher, we connect to one to online accounts, and we request the access tokens. And then we're actually able to make our own uh, REST API requests directly to the services. Uh, and then we pull Facebook and Twitter and all of them for all the new messages. And uh, we kind of uh, we download them. We store them in a, a unified format, so they're all stored in a, in a very easy to access uh, way. And uh, now the information that we that we gather uh, can be accessed from a number of different uh, avenues here. So uh, now obviously the main purpose of this talk is QML. If you're writing a QML app, we provide an API called QML Friends, and that gives you all kinds of uh, access into the data that we provide. Uh, but we also provide uh, LibFriends, which is a G object API. And that allows you to write front-end applications. Like, like if you were writing a desktop application, you could do it in C, Python, JavaScript, or anything else uh, supported by GObject. 
And the way that works typically is you make your API calls through libfriends. Like you would import libfriends into your project, and you would say, OK, you know, perform a refresh, download all the latest messages. And then uh, it doesn't return the messages directly to you from the API call. What it does is it publishes the, uh, the messages into a D model which uh, dmodel is a special kind of database that uh, is able to synchronize its contents over dbus. So what happens here is um, we, like the, the friends dispatcher in Python, puts the messages into this model. And then from any language, like from QML or anything, you're able to connect into that and uh, fetch the contents of the messages uh, you know, for display purposes. And uh, it's not just messages. We also sync contacts as well. We store the contacts in Evolution Data Server. So that uh, synchronizes with your actual address book if you're using Evolution. And uh, I think that's pretty much the basic uh, gist of it. Uh, oh, actually, I see a question on the IRC here. Aquarius says, are we using the streaming API? And the answer is we are not using the streaming API. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, conflicted with our architecture. What happened was, um, because we actually started writing the Friends Dispatcher before we even knew that the phone was the target. Like I, like I literally started writing this code with the desktop in mind, and um, uh, we did it in Python. And of course, Python has a number of performance issues. So when we found out that we were uh, targeting a phone instead, we had to make a number of drastic architecture changes in order to curb our, uh, our memory usage. And one of those changes was that the actual Python doesn't stay in memory uh, as a long-running process. What happens is we have a small, uh, we have a very, very lightweight Vala master that just kind of marshals everything. And then it just, it just invokes the Python um, periodically when it's needed in order to download new messages. So it uh, uses dbus invocation to just uh, to just start the Python, and then the Python runs for you know two or three minutes, and then it exits right away. So because of that architecture, we weren't actually able to support the Twitter streaming API. We had to uh, we have to just rely on polling because uh, because we can't afford to keep Python in memory all the time on the phone. It was just too big of a beast. So. And, and on the phone or any kind of low power um, scenarios, I don't know how appealing the um, streaming API really is. Um, when you have a you know low power situation like that, you really want to use as little as possible and maybe you know go out and query it periodically. I think is probably more optimal. I know a lot of people want the streaming API, but I don't know if it's quite as relevant in the uh, mobile world. All right. Oh, I sorry. There's another question here now. Uh, does friends try and provide all the different aspects of a service, events, groups, or just things they have in common? Uh, right now, it's mostly just things they have in common: status updates, replies, and mentions. Uh, we also support likes uh, or favorites on Twitter. Now, um, that said, we do have a very modular architecture. Uh, it's quite easy for us to add support for. Uh, for any new API endpoints. The only trick is uh, if we were going to add support for something like events, we would need a data store to store that information in, which we don't currently have at the moment. So um, I guess we could uh, we could investigate, <clears throat> excuse me, we could investigate different uh, calendaring applications to see uh, what kind of options we have in terms of downloading an event and then storing it in some kind of calendar. but. Uh, but we don't currently support events at the moment, no. Uh, Ken, did you want to talk a little bit about yeah. uh, how the QML integrates? Yeah, OK, so we can uh, we can move on to that now. Um, all right, so let me post the URL here to I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of examples with some comments in the code there. People can read along and look at these. Um, but so we have a, Q, a QML friends, which is the QML bindings um, for the friends backend. So you don't actually have to talk directly to Dbus and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that provides a bunch of conveniences, I hope. 
Um, and also very willing to uh, you know, take some feedback and see what's useful to people and improve the API a bit. Um, all the dependencies are uh, currently available. Most of them are actually available in Raring now. Um, although now that we're past feature freeze, there's a few uh, changes that we need um, that haven't been approved yet for a um, feature freeze um, exception yet. But uh, so you need to pull, uh, to get the stuff I'm talking about today, you'll need to pull it from the Super Friends PPA, which is uh, listed in the top of this paste bin. Oh, is my mic, my mic not working right? Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, I can hear you okay, but there is some clicking happening. Huh. Yeah, it's just a little bit choppy. It's not horrible. It's just okay. like you're you're definitely understandable. Okay. Um, so if you so you look through some of these uh, examples here, the code examples, um, I broke it down into a couple sections. One is the uh, the dispatcher component, and uh, okay, I'll try to speak up a little bit, Stuart. Um, so the dispatcher component gives you uh, access to some functions for interacting with your social networking services, like sending. Um, doing replies, retweets, like, um, unlike, things like that. Sharing, uploading images, uh, which is actually, so the friends back end is actually included in the touch images already. And um, it's the back end for the share app that's built in. And also the people lens uses the contacts that are synced from friends. And it also uses the, um, the D model that we store um, our results in uh, to power the latest tweet or Facebook post that's in your contacts. Uh, so that's all in the touch preview already. Um, so with the dispatcher component, uh, you can do things like, for example, send. There's a uh, send async method, uh, which you can send send your post on and then listen to on send complete to see if it succeeds or fails. Um, there's also a synchronous version of that where you can just call send and fire and forget and hope it works. Um, there's other variations on this, like for example, there's send for account async, um, where you pass in the uh, um, the account ID from online accounts. Um, I see that was a question that was just asked there. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can query online accounts to get a um, to get the ID for an account that you want. So there's QML bindings for online accounts already. Um, that's read-only right now, so you can't manipulate your online accounts through the QML bindings. But you can get a model of all of your accounts and then pick out the account you want to post to. So you might have a uh, widget on your, in your application or a component that lists the accounts, lets somebody select which account they want to post to. And uh, then you call send for account async with the first parameter being the um, account ID that online accounts gives you, and the second one being the text to send. Um, that's how you would select an individual account you want to send to. Um, or if you just call send async without specifying an account, um, it goes to all of your accounts that are configured. So you can send the same post to your Facebook, Twitter, and Identica accounts all in one shot. Um, there's also, um, I, don't have this, I don't have an example of this on um, this paste bin, but there's also a um, upload async, um, or upload for account async, I think is actually what it's called, um, which is what the share app uses. So you give that a, a URI to an image on your local machine, um, or actually even on the web, as long as it's a URI you can get to, and the account you want to post it to, and a description to go along with it, and it'll upload it, and you'll get the async callback to uh, know when it succeeds or fails. Um, and that'll like post to your Facebook page, um, or what have you. Uh, so there's another question here. It says, uh, how does one write a service provider like the Facebook and Twitter providers? Now, there's two parts to that. Um, the very first thing that you need is support from a bunch of online accounts. Um, and that is a little bit outside the scope of friends, but it's uh, certainly something that is possible. Um, basically, Alberto Martigan would be the, the best guy to ask about how to do that. I'm not exactly familiar with how to do it, but that is something that we would require as a prerequisite uh, before having support in friends. Now, once you have the plugin for Ubuntu Online Accounts, uh, it is actually fairly straightforward to add support for friends. Uh, what we do is uh, we have a base class uh, that which defines um, the very basic, uh, you know, the connection to the uh, the D model and uh, a few of the other architectural components of friends. And uh, all you have to do is implement, uh, like you just you just subclass the base class, and then you just have to implement the API endpoints for that uh, for that actual social network. So 
Um, all of the uh, like all of the connection into Ubuntu online accounts is handled for you. You just call a method to uh, to do the login, and then it gives you your access token. And then uh, there's also methods you can call, like if you need an OAuth signature, that's handled for you. Um, all that kind of stuff is uh, is all handled by friends. And then all you have to do basically, um, you just you just say like, okay, this is the URL of the REST API endpoint that I want. Uh, I'm going to call that. I'm going to get some JSON back, and then uh, you get your. Well, even if this if the server supports XML or like whatever format it supports, all you have to do is interpret it, and then store it in the D model in our uh, in our standard uh, consistent format, and then that automatically becomes available to all of the consumers of the friend service. Um, so the the friend service is so uh, nicely modular that um, some of the providers, like I think the Identica one's just a handful of lines of code. Um, because it can subclass from Twitter. Uh, Robert's done a great job of putting that together, so it's relatively easy to um, add new services there. Um, so uh, looking at the, the, the next question here the, about the um, synchronous versions of those uh, functions, uh, Robert, I think I'm correct to say it's just it's literally just fire and forget. You don't, it doesn't block at all, right? Um... That I'm not sure. Now, the, the code that I wrote in Vala for libfriends went quite a bit out of its way to actually block synchronously to be able to return a value. Uh, I'm not sure what you did in QML friends. So that yeah, could okay, be then, it would, then it would block as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, because QML friends really just wraps the, um, the G object bindings we have in libfriends. Um, okay. which yeah, it, it, it started out as fire and forget, but then we decided to do things a little bit more formally and. Uh, the uh, the synchronous versions will actually start um, they start their own uh, glib main loop uh, for the purposes of waiting for the callback to call and then it returns the value directly uh, whereas the asynchronous versions just take a callback and then call you back when they're ready okay so in that case it probably would uh, it probably would actually block that this is really just a wrapper for that okay. um, there's another question for the backup here is QML friends going to be included as part of the part of the Ubuntu SDK um, unclear. We haven't really talked about that. Um, right now, it's separate. Um, it would be nice if it actually did get included uh, at some point, but that's really not up to me. That's up to the SDK guys. But um, hopefully, you know, hopefully something like that could happen. It would be a nice compliment, I think. Um, so moving on a little bit here. So um, along with these send functions that are available and sharing for the uploading function, um, there's also retweet, like, and there's async and synchronous versions of all of these functions. Um, and they all work basically the same way. Um, I didn't include examples of all of them here on this code. This is just to give you a brief overview. Um, I think the more interesting part of it is actually uh, moving into something that was brand new, just really just added this week to QML Friends. And that's uh, I um, created a, a subclass to delist model, so you don't actually have to talk to D yourself anymore. You call QML Friends and get a stream model that you can populate your list view or repeater, um, anything that you can put a model behind. Um, very, very simple. If you look at lines, uh, line, you know, 38, 39, and 40 there on the paste bin, so it's, it's very, very straightforward to get a model that just contains every post, um, not filtered in any way. Um, just a couple lines, and then you can, you know, plug that into a list view or a repeater and just get all your results. Um, the trickier part, which I hope to improve, is since it really is just a subclass of the list model, the list model has generic naming for all the role, role names. Um, so they're named like you know, column 0, column 1, column 2. So if you look, there's a lines 42 through 65 there on the paste bin is kind of a mapping of the, uh, the D data model to the columns that are provided in the role names. Um, so that's not very intuitive, and I really want to improve that. So I need to, um, I need to wrap more of the DList model API, and I'm not much of a uh, QT guy, so um, I need to work on that a little bit more to make that better because I'd really like those role names to match the um, the name we call it in Friends to make it a, a bit more discoverable. Um, so inside your delegate, when you're using this model, you would reference you know if you want to include the uh, the sender's name, you would use column four for your value. Um, and then you can do some filtering on that too. Uh, so that that oh, by the way, that model is always sorted. Um, Descending by name, uh, by timestamp. So um, this will always be an ordered model by time, at least for now. Uh, I can you know, maybe tweak that down the road and you know, make that a, a parameter. Um, 
So you can also filter that a little bit. So you can filter by stream. Friends has this concept of a stream. So there's an images stream. So like your Flickr photos show up in, under images. So um, there's mentions. So like somebody replies to you, it shows up under a uh, under mentions um, and messages for just general messages that are just in your timeline. Um, so there's a variety of different streams available. So you can filter on that. So this example here in line 68 through 71 will just give you everything that's an image. You can also filter by service name. So even if you have multiple Twitter accounts, um, you can just specify what the, the service you want is Twitter, and it'll give you an aggregate of all the posts that are for Twitter, um, regardless of what account they were for. However, if you really just care about displaying the contents for um, a specific account, you can also filter by the accounts. You can set, set the account to two here, which is the ID for my Twitter account and the Ubuntu Online accounts. So you just have to get that from Ubuntu Online accounts, add that as a parameter there, and then you'll get a model that just contains those, those results. Uh, and then if you want to get dive down a little bit deeper even and get a, sub, a model to display inside your results of, say, a thread, so the new Weber code is doing this now, um, you can expand a, a post, and when you click on it, 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 it you know, grows out a little bit, and then you can see the thread of all the comments and replies on that same post. So you can do that by specifying the stream with reply to, slash, and the pin message, the message ID, which is available in the model as well. Um, and that'll give you a, um, another, another model that has just a thread. Um, so that's kind of how what we've done to wrap the D model to make it a bit easier for people to uh, just get this model that they want. Um, there's also a nice um, uh, set of utilities. Right now there's only two functions there. I'm only going to really talk about one right now because I'm actually not that sure how useful the other one is right now. Um, but we have a utils component that um, you can create a time stream from. So everybody knows, you know, on Twitter it always says um, this post was, you know, uh, a few seconds ago, 10 minutes ago, three hours ago, two days ago. Um, it's a time delta as a string. Um, and actually, like Twitter's terms of service actually tells you, you know, what that should, how that should work. Um, so this actually gives you a friendly string back um, for a time string. And that's at the very last line of the paste bin. Um, so you can use that when you're displaying it inside your, uh, inside your list view or, or whatever. So there's a couple more questions here. Um, Aquarius says, uh, will it land in 13.04 soon? And, uh, well, the answer is yes. Uh, we are applying for the feature phase exception today, I believe. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully that will land uh, within the next couple of days, uh, depending how the feature phase exception process goes. And uh, let's see. <laughs> um... Question, does friends provide things like URL shortening? Now, I did implement a, UL, a URL shortener in the back end. Uh, I'm not exactly clear what the, uh, what the QML friends uh, wrapper provides for that, but. So, but yeah, yes, um, the, the QML, the, yeah, the, the, QML, the QML bindings aren't providing that yet, uh, but I do plan on adding that. Um, the only reason it actually doesn't yet is just because I haven't figured out how to do that in like a text area inside QML yet. So I don't know how to use it myself to test it. I need, I'm still learning QML um, and actually rather enjoying it as a you know, GTK guy. I'm quite happy coming over to the QML world. Um, but I haven't really dived into that yet. Um, the, the API does provide it. It's just not exposed in QML just yet. And that should get implemented pretty soon. Um, so next question is, um, will this be in the Ubuntu touch images soon? Um, it already is in the touch images. Um, the version that's in the touch images, uh, well, actually, it probably is the most current version, actually, because they the touch images pull from the Super Friends PPA. So um, they probably do have updated packages that I pushed this week. Yeah, so it, the, the, friend, the whole Friends stack has been in the touch images since the, the first day. Um, I don't know about the Weber client app. We haven't really talked about that. Um, it's uh, we're definitely shooting to get the Weber client app um, that's QML based into raring by default on the desktop, um, and I'm not sure about on the touch images or not. I, I'd like to see it in the touch images, but um, we haven't we haven't really discussed that. Right, convergence, convergence. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. 
Um, one thing I, I do also want to touch on is, so you know, I am new to Qt and QML, um, and I haven't I haven't really mastered like you know generating um, proper docs and all that sort of stuff. I've been adding doc strings. Um, they're not terribly complete yet, uh, but I, w I would love love it if somebody could help me generate a docs package. You know, properly um, spit out the results. I've looked at how the Ubuntu UI Toolkit package does it, and I've stuffed some things in there, but I haven't really uh, tested to see how well it works. So um, it would be really awesome if somebody you know, took a look at what I did and make it not suck, because we really do need proper API docs. Um, and uh, all these examples that I just posted here I also will be including in a, uh, a blog post probably later today. So um, we'll get some more documentation out there, and um, hopefully we'll actually get it all landing on developer.adventure.com as well real soon. So there's a bit of a discussion going on in the IRC channel here. I just want to summarize a little bit of what's being said just for the benefit of people watching the recording later. Um, now, earlier, uh, someone had asked about adding uh, the provider plug. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so should we? So I guess nobody can hear. There he is, Mike. Mike. Apparently, we're off. We're offline. Are we back on yet? Okay, we're back. Oh, okay, we're back. Says we're now, back. where did I get cut off from? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it doesn't matter that much. But basically, um, I just wanted to mention the Ubuntu online accounts. Um, on the desktop, we have a really nice sign-on UI for uh, for setting up and registering your accounts. But on the phone, it doesn't actually exist yet. Uh, there's no design for it, and it hasn't been started yet. So, uh, so actually, using friends on the phone is a little bit tricky because uh, you have to use like a terminal app to register your account, and it's I've, I've had a lot of difficulty using it. So yeah. it's more than probably... a little bit tricky. I've actually written some documentation on how to do it, and I've tried to walk a couple people through doing it, and they failed miserably. Yeah, uh, I wasn't able to even do it, actually. So I have a build of Sign-On UI, which is one a piece of the stack there that um, uh, needs some changes in order to function on the touch images. So I have a build of that that people can use, but there's a few problems with it, particularly on the phone image. So you have to run a command line script to add your accounts and to initiate a login. So you do that like over SSH. And then when it prompts you to log in, for some reason, the way it launches the, um, the web UI that that you actually type your username and password in, um, doesn't interact very well with the keyboard. So you constantly lose focus and stuff on the keyboard, and it's excruciatingly painful. If you do manage to get an account added, it does just magically work. So like the share app will post, and friends will start downloading all your data. Um, I'm running you know, Gwibber right now on, on my Nexus 7 with the uh, touch images. Because um, I've got managed to get my accounts added, so uh, Marty's been working real hard, Alberto, Marty on IRC here, working hard on um, getting some of the WebKit related stuff uh, fixed up, so we're really prepared once we get real designs for a um, account settings interface for the touch images to make it easier for people to add. Yeah, Marty, you rock. One thing that I have noticed is pretty interesting. We're trying to run an app on the desktop and on the, um, uh, the touch images. It's like, for example, in Gwibber, you know, I have a model that has 2,000 or so rows. On the desktop, it's a little bit choppy when you scroll it. But on the touch images, it's like silky smooth scrolling. Um, I don't know why it's so much more performant on the touch images than it is on the desktop. I'd really like to uh, figure that out a little bit and optimize it more on the desktop. But, um, I think that might nice be the uh, QML list view stuff. 
not loading stuff from the model until it needs it. Yeah, I, I'm just not sure why it performs so much better on the touch device, though. I mean, it's the same same software stack, essentially, you know, the, as far as the builds of Qt and all that kind of stuff. It's just speedy and smooth on the uh, touch images. Surface flinger, maybe. Yeah, it's all maybe. mirror. Yeah, it's all mirror. mirror it's, it's the lack of X. <laughs> um, so I, I would like to make it a little bit speedier on the desktop, but uh, we can do that, you know, uh, after we actually get it landed on the desktop, we can work on how we can optimize it even more, but uh, uh, overall. Yeah, the important thing is just uh, landing it with the feature freeze exception, and then we can worry about fixing bugs later. <laughs> yeah. Um, any more questions, guys? Ken, can you uh, demo the QML front end? Um, the Gribble one right now? Sure. Let me um, let me fire yeah. it up here and then figure out how to um, how to share. Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> That's why. Those questions show us it. <laughs> um, okay. Let me uh, make sure I have a working build here installed. I think I have a working build. If yours is not working right now. OK, my, mine, mine's good. Um, all right, so let me see how I can figure out how to uh, share my screen here. I've never done that in a Google Hangout before. It can't be hard. Screen share, how about that? Yeah, that was my first time, too. So it, it automatically shares the whole thing, right? Yeah. Uh, let me uh, get rid of everything else here. All right. There's usually a way where you can pick a specific window, but I've noticed that doesn't always work with uh, QML scene. Oh, yeah, it actually only gave me choices of workspaces to choose. All right, so you guys can see the, um, see the app right here? No, uh, no. Ken, what we're seeing is your Google Hangout window. What? Yeah, I chose the it's other got, one. If you're doing yeah. dual screen, you're showing us the wrong screen. Okay, all right. Just yeah, just move the window over. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I do have a couple problems. Like I, I have trouble when you scroll all the way to the top, sometimes it bounces too far and it doesn't won't position itself below the header here. Um so that's a little bit annoying. It's a bit of a bug. Um you're scrolling and you can like, you know, uh Expand and reply in line here. Retweet, favorite. Um, just find something that has like a some comments. There's a Facebook post that might have something. Uh, it's just got an image. Uh, the onion probably has some comments on it. Probably does. <laughs> no. No. I, no. I love the onion. All right. This one probably has some. There we go. Just one. Uh, so this is the inline thread, and you can reply right from here. If you click on the um, if you click on the star there, you'll favorite it, and then it'll become less. You know, uh, the opacity will change, so you can see more of it. Um, now, does that correspond to like a uh, plus one on Facebook or something? Yep. Or that just or didn't Google Plus. Yeah. Well, except that we don't support Google Plus, but it would be no, it's the same it'd, be, thing. it'd be equivalent to a Facebook like or a Twitter favorite. Okay. And I got a little button here to jump back to the top, which it doesn't quite jump all the way to the top. I haven't figured out why yet. Um, so since we brought that up, you, can you guys just uh, briefly mention why we don't support Google Plus? Because I'm sure somebody's <laughs> going to want to know. Yes, yeah, so Google has never um, has never released a uh, write API. It's read only, and it's not very complete. And um, I'm reasonably sure at this point that they plan on never providing an API that other people can use. Um, uh, the um, technical architect on Google Plus has some pretty strong opinions about why Facebook ended up the way it did with um, all the spam of that you get in your in your timeline from um, Facebook apps and things like that, and uh, he's got some pretty strong opinions on what should have right access to your Google Plus um, account and what shouldn't. 
So I'm reasonably sure that at least for the foreseeable future, there will be no right API, um, which is really unfortunate. I, I, I want it, and we've been wanting to do it for a long time, and it's just, just been waiting and waiting. Ken, can you show us uh, the different streams? Um, actually, we can't. I can't right now. <laughs> All right, then. Sorry. Normally, <laughs> if, you, if you swipe left or right, you get different streams, but I guess that's broken right now. Well, actually, I've been playing around this morning with uh, collapsing that. Um, uh, your dynamic uh, layout stuff? Yeah, for one, it just it uses a fair bit more memory because it loads the model multiple times for each site, for each stream. And um, especially now that uh, so Robert's fixed some bugs in um, only downloading you know relevant data from your accounts. Um, I have less old cruft, so like if I haven't had a private message in six months, my private stream is empty. Um, so I don't even want to display the tab if uh, you know if it's empty. But um, so I was playing around a little bit with just collapsing that all into one view and maybe even using a page stack instead of the tabs. Um, so I haven't really decided what I'm going to do there, but it is much more compact memory-wise than only having the one, the one stream. Uh, Ken, if we'll you need, uh, if you need to get some older data for testing purposes, you can just delete the cache file out of the cache folder, and yeah. uh, it will download your old messages again. Hmm. Um, so there's a question on IRC here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, v. Thompson says the Facebook Core app will use QML friends, right? Uh, what is the point of the app if Gwiver is on the touch images? Um, that's a really good question. That's kind of something that's been on my mind. And I, I think the answer is the Facebook Core app will provide more Facebook features, like such as events and, uh, and groups and stuff like that, whereas Gwiver is basically just about messages and contacts. Yeah, let, let me yeah, talk so about this a little bit. For me, let me talk about this a little bit. So, so it's something we've struggled with a long time with Gwiver. So since Gwiver tries to aggregate all these services, it, it's always been frustrating to try to provide the, um, the, the feature set that's the lowest common denominator between all of them. And it's pretty hard to provide a useful user interface around that supports all the features that, say, Facebook uses when some of the content in your feed is just Twitter. So you have to do um, a whole bunch of you know, um, tricks in your code to you know, change your UI and adapt. Um, plus, in, in the consumer space, if you think about you know your Android phone and things like that, regular consumers, most of them probably really only use one or two accounts. They probably focus on one service, and they're used to going for a Facebook app. If they're a Facebook user, they're going to look for a Facebook app. They're not going to look for an app that aggregates all their feeds. So the, the, the Gwiver concept doesn't necessarily fill the need for everybody. Um, so I think there's I think there's a, there's a lot of overlap there, of course. So having a lot of shared code in the friends side helps a lot. But I definitely think there's plenty of room to have multiple apps that focuses on um, certain services. So um, I, I think I think there's room for all of them to play. That's why I'm not even convinced. I I really care if Gwiver is in the touch images by default. Um, I really more care about the platform being there, and if we can have great applications that use it. Um, that give the users what they need. That's what I care about more. Um, so it's a discussion we need to have. I mean, maybe Gwiver is useful to a lot of people. Um, but in my opinion, I think it's probably more useful to have a really great Facebook app that uses friends under, underneath. So the shared code is shared and not re-implemented. And what's nice is the uh, QML components that you're providing for things like getting uh, a feed of Facebook status updates the Facebook app can use those and then they don't have to implement that particular set of features. They can just concentrate on what they're adding on top of that. Right. And the same with the Twitter client. Right. Yeah, my biggest fear was um, <clears throat> when I found out that they like they were calling for, uh, for the community to come in and write uh, the core apps, my biggest fear was that someone would come along, uh, decide to write a Facebook app, and not even know about friends, like not even slightly use friends. Uh, because I've been working on friends for the last six or seven months now. It's been like it's taken over my whole life. And uh, you know, for someone to just come along and completely ignore all my work and re-implement everything from scratch uh, would just be just a really painful waste of man hours. So um, I'm really looking forward to having some uh, 
you know, like the official Facebook app and the official Twitter app to use my backend code and then just implement uh, the extra things they need on the side. Yeah, and in the same way that desktop Gwibber didn't replace going to Facebook in your browser, but was still useful for what it did in terms of just aggregating your feeds together, I think it'll serve the same role on uh, the touch devices too. Right. So, I mean, as an example, I mean, we're doing this already on the desktop. We've had the Gribber lens for a while on the desktop. The Friends lens is replacing it, which is really just a viewer of that same D model that the Friends service provides. So the data is only out there one time. It's just running on your system, and any app can tap into that and render that that um, that data any way they any way they need to. So the lens does that. The uh, in the touch images, the people lens does that. So the people lens that, that are uh, running in the uh, touch images is just displaying the last tweet or last Facebook post from your contacts, um, and it's doing that off that same D model. So there's a question here. Um, do we plan on supporting Reddit in Friends? Um, now, there's no plan for it, uh, but like I said earlier, if we were to add support, uh, we would require support in a bunch of online accounts first. Uh, and that's something that I'm not uh, the most familiar with. So uh, if someone were to write an Ubuntu Online Accounts plugin for Reddit, um, I would uh, I'd certainly be interested in writing a hmm. Reddit plugin. But, uh, but yeah, there's some groundwork that needs to be laid before. I always before. considered Reddit more along the lines of like a newsreader than a uh, social client. Right. That's what I was about to bring up. Although um, ages ago, there was um, Reddit support in Gwibber um, before we ever had it in Karmic. Um, but that got it got stale and the API changed and it got removed. Um, personally, I don't think that fits very well in um, in the friends paradigm. Um, although, because it is more news type oriented, although Reddit does have a fair bit more social overlap than a lot of other news uh, sources would. So it's not just like following an RSS feed. Um, there is a lot of interaction, well, and comment threads. So there is Reddit. There could be an argument to have that in Friends, but uh, news-related things I don't think necessarily belongs in Friends. Now, Ken, you have CNN on your Twitter, so I don't think you're one to talk about not having news in your Gwibber feed. Well, so that's a different kind of news. I'm talking about like RSS feeds, right? <laughs> so um, in, in the Reddit type Reddit type world, I mean, you're you're reading about posts that people post. Now, I think the comments on those posts, like if you subscribe to a post, it might be interesting to have the comment threads show up in Friends. You know, Reddit does provide a little bit more of a social type um, environment than uh, your average like RSS source. Um, now, there were a couple of questions that we uh, passed by. OK. Um, so Stuart is asking, if he blocks a user, are that user's posts automatically removed from your streams, or do you have to manually refresh? Oh, sorry, I forgot to answer that one. But uh, uh, currently, there isn't any code uh, that detects for blocks, blocked users and then deletes uh, deletes their messages. Um, that is something that we could look at implementing, but there currently isn't any support for that. OK. And I'm going to ignore his thing about timeline being one word. Mm, I already answered that. Oh, OK. All right, any other questions? Uh, so V Thompson, yeah, if you're working on a Reddit app, you uh, you might not uh, get much benefit out of friends at the moment. You might have to just implement that on your own. I do think there could be some value to having like a um, Reddit plugin for a bunch of online accounts, and then the Reddit app could use that um, for authenticating. Um, does Reddit support Open ID? I don't know. I do not know. But I know you can do non-open ID stuff with online accounts, right? Yes. I was just thinking it might be, uh, you know, a, a good use case for a generic open ID provider. Um, but I know there's been a couple of uh, community contributed um, plugins there. Like I know um, um, Chris Wayne did a um, Fitbit plugin for uh, a bunch of online accounts, so it can log into Fitbit. He did a GitHub one as well. So it can authenticate with GitHub. It's pretty trivial to add anything that's OAuth related. 
Oh, maybe we should add GitHub support to friends and get comments on all your projects. Sure, I would. I wish we could do that with Launchpad. <laughs> oh I yeah. Really want to be able to track Launchpad projects? Yeah, but um, then you'd need the Launchpad. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe maybe sometime in the future you can uh, we you can work with the us on the community team and we'll do like a uh, a jam or something to get different providers for Gwibber or for friends I should say. Yeah, that, that would be fun. Same for online accounts. Could all be done at the same time actually. Yeah, I suppose online accounts is what fifty percent of it. Yeah. Unless they're using OAuth. Well, the the OAuth ones are easy. Well, the OAuth was a pain in the butt, but uh, well, now that the online account side is a module for it. Yeah, the online account stuff is pretty easy with the, with the, for the OAuth related ones, and Marty's made it even easier by making it more declarative. So you just have like an XML file that um, provides all that. I'm not sure if all that was merged or not, um, but uh, Marty has a branch for that that just lets you define what all the parameters are, and then it just does all the legwork. Any other questions? What's QHC? Oh, the um, the uh, the doc generated stuff from the doc strings. Uh, if uh, if that's what you're talking about with QHC, then yeah, that's what I want. I basically want to be able to generate. Uh, generate docs from the doc strings in the um, um, the QML module that I have. Um, then we can post that on developer.ubuntu.com along with all the other API docs. And also generate doc packages so you can install the doc package for QML friends and have them locally on your own machine. So yeah, Bob Weaver, if you uh, have any experience there and want to help out, I'd love it. Yes, patches are welcome. If you uh, if you find a feature that's missing from friends, have a look at the code. It's all very simple Python. Very easy to just add a new method for a new endpoint uh, for an API. We can uh, report new things. Definitely looking uh, looking forward to some collaboration. All right, last call for questions. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, where can they find you guys if they have uh, uh, questions later on? Hash, hash Quiver on Freenode. Yeah. All right. My nickname is Robru, and uh, Ken Van Dyne is Ken Van Dyne. Yeah, I'm, I'm hard to find. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Robert. Everybody, Thanks. we will be back with uh, the final session, which will be lightning talks in about 10 minutes, so stick around.